Okay, here we have one of the most commercially valuable and ecologically valuable species of hardwood tree in uh, eastern North America, white oak, Quercus alba. Uh, Quercus alba is really easy to identify. It's called white oak. It has this very uh, light colored bark, but it's more of a kind of a newspaper gray sort of color. Um, but the, the wood is a lot lighter uh, in color. That's where that white oak comes from. Um, it is a member of the white oak group. We kind of split oaks in North America into white oaks and red oaks. Um, this is, you know, as white oak, it's, it's a member of the white oak group. Um, and as such, it has a lot of features that align with other uh, white oaks. Um, namely, uh, the leaves have rounded lobes, um, whereas the red oaks have pointed lobes. Um, so this is a classic leaf, very easy to identify. Um, not much else looks like this white oak leaf. Um, so you can see it's simple rather than compound. Um, it's held alternate uh, from, from other leaves and branches rather than opposite. Um, and uh, that has these deep sinuses and those rounded lobes, really easy to identify. Um, it's hard to find these on the ground at this point uh, in the year, but this is what the acorn looks like. Usually they're a little bit longer than this, a little bit bigger than this, um, but they're typically longer than, than they are round. They're sort of a, you know, more of a, an oblong acorn, and they have a very warty cap, um, uh, rather than a cap with, you know, scales uh, and, and such on it. Um, but, so, there you have it. Oh, one other identifying trait here. So the bark, you know, rather than just the color, which is quite easy to identify, um, it splits into these, uh, these, these, these vertical cracks and ridges. Um, towards the bottom, uh, those, those ridges and, and cracks are uh, not super long, you know, just a couple inches. But actually, the further up the tree you go, uh, the flakier it gets. And so we have the, they tend to peel off on one side um, and, and be uh, affixed to the tree on another side. So if you see further up a tree, very shaggy bark, but only, uh, only coming off one side like this, then it is almost certainly white oak. And again, you know, that happens up towards the crown of the tree rather than at the base of the tree. Typically we get more texture, uh, more cracking, more, you know, deep ridges, that kind of thing as we get to the bottom of the tree. But again, this one is, is unique because uh, it has those cracks up high. Um, that is one of the reasons why it's ecologically so important, is it turns out that is excellent roosting habitat for bats. So this is one of the few species in eastern North America that has roosting capacity for bats while the tree is still alive. Usually bats use dead trees um, as roosting sites, but obviously dead trees are ephemeral on the landscape. They only last a couple years before they rot, fall over, and can't be used for bats anymore to hide up underneath the bark. Your average bat is not too much larger than your thumb, and they're really good at compressing themselves, so you can imagine them getting up under here and having a nice little time roosting underneath the bark uh, to rest um, during the daytime in the summer um, and to raise their pups under here as well. So a really valuable resource. Um, the other big resource is that acorn. Uh, so uh, very prolific um, at producing acorns. Um, like other oak species, they have a masting cycles, so they don't produce a ton of acorns every single year. If they did that, then there would be a ton of predators around uh, that would eat all those. There would be tons and tons of deer, turkey, squirrels that would eat every single acorn every year. But what they do is they produce really big crops of acorns uh, occasionally at a just sort of a random time, usually on kind of a five to seven year sort of cycle. They'll have a really big mast crop where they'll drop a lot of acorns and all those squirrels and deer and turkeys will be happy, but they won't have enough resources uh, for years and years to be able to grow their population. Um, so there will be some acorns in those really big mast years uh, that persist, that don't get eaten up, um, and they'll be the next generation. Um, speaking of the next generation, oaks, even though they are a you know fully forest species, um, and they like to germinate in leaf litter. Uh, they don't germinate very well, uh, well, they germinate pretty well uh, in shade, but they don't grow very well in shade. They'll persist a couple years if they have heavy shade, um, but to fully become the next generation of canopy tree, they need quite a bit of light. Um, so clearing out uh, space around individual oaks um, is valuable not only to increase their growth, but to increase the, uh, the capacity for them to regenerate on the forest floor. Um, we, we can call this thinning, uh, where you are choosing species that either aren't really uh, contributing as much ecologically to the woods, or maybe species that are ready to be harvested now in a forest stand, and so you're removing not the entire canopy, but enough to put enough light on the floor to regenerate those oaks. And then would become time to remove the, the parent oak species if your objective was to create a new generation of, of young oak forest. Um, uh, really, really valuable commercially. So 
harvesting of oaks is a valuable thing. Um, it has a very, you know, renowned uh, rot resistant, strong, shatter resistant wood. Um, it also has waterproof wood uh, because of how it uh, chemically seals off um, its living tissue into dead tissue um, uh, as it ages into that heartwood. Um, that heartwood is waterproof. Uh, and so it can be used for things like whiskey barrels. And so a lot of whiskey uh, manufacturers are actually a little nervous right now because there are less and less white oaks on the landscape, um, partly because there's not enough potential for them to regenerate because a lot of our woods don't have a lot of light. They're not, not very open and oftentimes aren't really being managed. Uh, in addition, you know, impacts facing the white oak are uh, you know, lack of forest management, complete overabundance of deer. Deer really love to eat beyond just the, the acorns, they really love to eat the leaves and the buds. So all the young oaks just get nipped off immediately if we have an overabundance of deer. And of course, invasive plants that come in and suppress that regeneration as well. So there's a lot of things facing the white oak, even though, though it's, you know, at this point, one of the most valuable species in our woods. Um, so we are at the point where we really need to start taking action. Uh, it's still pretty common, um, but it is regenerating less and less and less. And we need to make sure it's a, still a vigorous component of our woods for years and years to come.